Welcome to part one of the overview for CS5254, which is a course I'm teaching in summer of 2023 on concurrent object-oriented and functional programming. In this part of the lesson, we'll describe the course contents and logistics, focusing on the course philosophy, the course contents, and the structure of the lecture material. There's clearly a growing need for software developers who know how to write concurrent programs for a range of computing platforms, including mobile devices, laptops, desktops, as well as cloud computing environments. The topics covered in this course apply to all of these platforms, not just Android, although we will be using Android quite a bit as we implement various applications and examples throughout the course. The demand for programmers who understand concurrency is driven by advances in software and hardware infrastructure, including the advent of multi-core and many-core processors, mass storage, ubiquitous network connectivity, as well as commodity hardware and software platforms. As seen over the past 20 years or so, Moore's law has morphed a bit from doubling performance every 18 to 24 months to doubling the number of transistors on a chip, leading to an increase in the number of processor cores. Concurrency in these contexts is commonly used in mobile devices to offload work from the user interface thread to background threads that perform long running and or blocking operations. For example, in Android, you're only allowed to do non-blocking or short-lived operations in the user interface thread that provides a display to the screen that's seen by the user, whereas background threads are capable of doing things like network operations, accessing databases, doing long-running computations, and so on. Concurrency is also commonly used to process client requests in multi-core backend computing environments, such as microservice architectures you'd find in modern data centers or cloud server contexts. In my experience, having taught these types of courses for decades, effective techniques and practices for designing and programming concurrent apps, especially mobile apps, are not best learned through generalities and platitudes. In other words, sitting and thinking is not sufficient. Instead, it's much better to see by example how concurrent programs can be made easier to write and read, easier to maintain and modify, and more efficient and more resilient by applying time-proven software patterns, as well as object-oriented and functional design and programming techniques. Therefore, this course will involve lots of hands-on software development, as well as applying tests to make sure that the software you're writing conform to the requirements and expectations. So let's talk about the course contents. The first part of the course will give an overview of foundational Java functional programming concepts and features, things such as Lambda expressions, method references, and functional interfaces. These features, features were initially added in Java 8 and then expanded thereafter over the past other 12 releases or so. Naturally, we'll also spend a lot of time covering foundational Java concurrency mechanisms, such as Java threading and synchronizer mechanisms. The threading mechanisms will include the list of topics we see on the left-hand side, such as threads, runnables, the executor framework, futures, and so on. And the synchronizer mechanisms we'll cover will involve things like the traditional synchronized methods and statements, notification methods, many different types of locks, types of conditions, semaphores, and various types of barriers. We'll provide roughly equal focus on Java synchronization mechanisms and Java threading mechanisms throughout this course. We'll also talk quite a bit about patterns and frameworks that are developed and applied for concurrent programming. I've done lots of work on software patterns for the past three decades, and we'll be seeing some examples of that throughout the material as well. I make an assumption that you either know or can quickly learn parts of Android you need to be successful, Android Studio, so-called modern Java, which is the functional features of Java, as well as the Git source code revision control library. If you have questions about these things or you need to get a refresher, please see item 12 at the course fac available at the link at the bottom of the slide. Let's talk a bit about the structure of the lecture material. As we mentioned before, there are four main topics in the course, starting with Java functional programming. You can find more videos on Java functional programming at the link at the bottom of the slide. We'll cover some in this course as well. 
We'll cover Java threading, things like Java threads, Java runnables, the Java executor framework from a whole bunch of different points of view. We'll cover both basic and advanced Java synchronization mechanisms. There's many, many classes that provide these capabilities that we'll be covering in this course. And of course, we'll also talk about software patterns that are used to guide the development and successful application of application and system frameworks. We'll be bouncing around a bit when covering these topics in order to facilitate the assignments. I'll try to cover the material that you'll need in order to do your programming assignment at the moment. And of course, there's also lots of other supplemental information that we'll have for each assignment that you can use to get further information that's specific to that particular assignment. We've decomposed the lessons into a number of different parts. So each of the topics we talked about has a bunch of lessons associated with it. Each lesson is composed of various parts. Each part is a single lecture, and each part is composed of segments. You'll see this when you watch the videos. And you'll be able to find videos of each lecture available either on Brightspace, which are the ones that I've pre-recorded that you can watch, as well as ones we'll be creating each week in our live session. And the live session videos will be going on my website here at the bottom of the page, the Brightspace Videos, of course, are only available to people who are subscribed to take the course at Vanderbilt as part of the online master's program. But the other supplemental material will be available through my YouTube channel, so you can watch that uh, whenever you want to see it. There will be periodic tests on the material that's covered in the lectures. All the tests, including the final, if we have one, are closed book, closed internet, closed chat GPT, or any other AI tool you might want to use closed computing device, except, of course, the computer you're using to take the test, etc. So they're really intended for things that you've learned in the course. The first monthly exam will be held on Tuesday, June 5th, via Brightspace during our live session from 6.30 to 8 p.m. We'll do our best to try to grade and review the tests by the next class, so you'll get feedback next Tuesday when we come back together. And that's one of the benefits of having a class with about 20 people in it. We can actually get everything done in that period of time. I recommend that you study for the exams by reviewing the PDF versions of the slides that are available and or re-watching or watching the videos on both Brightspace and YouTube. That's by far the best way to study. And I'll also try to give you some uh, kind of hints on what to focus on in the class before we take the test. There might be a final exam that might be cumulative. If we have one, and I'll talk in a second about when we might have one, the focus will be really on the last weeks of the semester. We typically do a final exam if we end up with all the programming assignments being finished before the final week of the class. If the programming assignment goes longer, and sometimes it does just because people take longer to get the things finished, and I have to account for that in my schedule, then we may not have a final. So we'll see, uh, we'll talk about that later in the course. So that's the end of part one of the overview of the CS5254 class.